Hello everyone and welcome to a short presentation on mobile network sharing. Network deployment is getting tougher by the day. Mobile network operators are required to improve coverage by deploying more and more sites. Existing technologies continue to be enhanced and new technologies are on the horizon. At the same time, the average revenue per user, RPU, has not seen any significant increase. In many developed countries, the user count is not changing either. This is compelling operators to come up with new ways of saving money. This presentation will look at one example of this, mobile network infrastructure sharing. Let's start by looking at the simplest network sharing option, which is site sharing or mast sharing. In this case, different operators have their own dedicated network, but they use a common site or mast for their networks. This allows them to share costs of leasing the site, power, in case generators, etc. are needed and everything else. It also allows them to share security costs. This approach is becoming more and more common and it's being used with 2G, 3G and 4G networks. In some cases, for example in the UK, the operators have formed separate companies for network sharing. EE and 3 have a joint infrastructure sharing company called MBNL and O2 and Vodafone have CTIL. The main thing to remember is that with this approach, the capacity between multiple operators is not shared. Hence, this is generally the best option with the very busy urban sites. There is also no limitation as, to, as such on how many operators can partake in site or mast sharing. The limitations are generally based on the available space. This is an example of site sharing via Andy Sutton. Note that the same site is used, but each operator has their own mast. This is an example of mast sharing. Here, the two operators, Shore and Manx Telecom, have their infrastructure on the same mast. Another example of mast sharing from Hawaii. Here, there is no mast as such, but different operators are using the same infrastructure to host their antennae and RRHs. Multiple operator radio access network, or MORAN, is not defined by standards. In this case, while baseband is shared, the RF unit is not shared. Each operator is still transmitting on its own dedicated carrier. Here again, the capacity probably won't be shared, assuming that the hardware is capable of handling enough users. In the picture, you can see that we have shown 2G, 3G and 4G for this approach, but we are not sure if this has been used by anyone for 2G or if it is even available for 2G. Multiple operator core network, or MOCIN, is defined in 3GPP specifications and has been around for a while. For UMTS, MOCIN has been supported since 3GPP release 6. For LTE, since release 8, and support for GRAN was added as part of release 11. The main thing to note in MOCIN is that there is a single carrier which can belong to operator 1 or 2 or anyone. MOCIN can be carried out with up to six operators. With MORAN, while there is no defined limitation, in practice it may be difficult to implement with more than two operators. In MOCAN, the system information can carry information about multiple operators and then each user sends information in the NAS message as to which core network it wants to communicate with. This option is simple and very well suited in case of rural and remote areas, where there may be just a few users. One site and single equipment could be shared by all operators to provide coverage to all the available users. If we look at basic signaling, just to understand how Mocken works, multiple operators will send their operator specific information to the access network. The access network will send the access information and the list of operators, MCC and MNC, mobile country code and network code to the UE. The UE will set up the RRC connection and then it will send the first NAS message, which is the initial direct transfer message by saying that it actually wants to connect to the particular core network, in our case, operator two. In case of gateway core network or GWCN, the core network is shared between multiple operators. In this approach, it would make sense for the operators to have a shared infrastructure in place from the start. As you can imagine, all operators sharing the infrastructure via GWCN will have the same radio conditions. What will differentiate them is the service offering and the tariffs. There are two main 3GPP specifications that cover network sharing. Service aspects and requirements for network sharing brings together various deployment scenarios, network operator requirements, user requirements, and other considerations for network sharing solutions. 
It also lays down fundamental principles, such as avoiding the need for proprietary UEs to benefit from network sharing, the requirement to support legacy devices, the need to allow service differentiation between different shared operators, and avoiding compromises to the services offered in shared networks. Network sharing architecture and functional description defines the architecture and functions needed to allow multiple core network operators to share a single radio access in a way as to meet the requirements laid out in 3GPP TR22.97 as listed above. I hope you found this short tutorial on network sharing useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, please let us know. Feel free to check out our other videos on this channel. Thank you.